grade 8 math number 7.2a. This entire chapter 7 is about solving linear equations. Now we're going to work with rational numbers. And fractions are rational numbers. So this is solving linear equations that have fractions. To solve an equation with the same variable on both sides that has fractions, we start by eliminating the fractions from the equation. We multiply both sides of the equal sign by the same factor. We use the same steps to isolate the variable that were used for solving equations with integer coefficients and constants. Remember from last year? We multiply both sides of the equal sign, so the resulting equation has the same solution as the original equation. And if you're confused about these terms, this is a term and this is a term. They're separated by a plus or a minus sign, an operation sign. This is a variable term because it has a variable in it. Is a constant term because it's just the number and it's the constant number. So this is a coefficient in front of the variable. It could be a fraction or it could be a whole number like this. It could be negative or positive. That's why they say integer because integers are negative or positive whole numbers. So it could be a negative or positive coefficient. See? So it's an integer coefficient. All right? And this variable term can change depending on what that variable is standing for, right? All right, so I don't know if you remember, but in seventh grade, we learned to solve for x on one side of the equation by multiplying both sides of that equation by the reciprocal of a fraction. So if we had like uh, negative half x equals negative 5, we just multiplied both sides of the equation by the reciprocal of that half, that negative half. We flipped it around. Remember, the reciprocal is like the flipped around upside down version of the fraction. We multiplied both sides by that. Well, we're really multiplying both terms, the negative 5 and the negative half x, see? Now, with a variable on both sides, we multiply by the least common multiple, and we do it to all the denominators. By multiplying both sides of the equation by that least common multiple, that LCM, we eliminate all the fractions but we must multiply all the terms by the LCM, just like we did with the reciprocal. So if you remember from last year, we had a variable on one side, so we just multiplied both sides by the reciprocal. And we multiplied both sides by a negative 2 over 1, because that's the reciprocal for the negative half x. We multiply this side by negative 2 over 1, and this side by negative 2 over 1. What happens here is we've got 2 times 1 is 2 over 1 times 2 is 2, and it's a negative and a negative, right? So they're going to make a positive. So this 2 over 2 right here, it's the same thing as this, it created our friend the invisible 1, didn't it? Because 2 over 2 is a 1. So now we just have 1x. And on this side, this negative 5 times the negative 2 over 1, we could just put it over a 1 as an improper fraction, right, to make our multiplying easier. 5 times 2 is 10 over 1 times 1. And this is a negative, isn't it? It's a negative 5 over 1 because that's a negative 5. When you multiply a negative and a negative, you get a positive. So we get a positive 10 over 1 or x equals 10. All right, do you remember that from last year? All right, well now we're going to use the least common multiple because we have a variable on both sides. See them right here? We have two variable coefficients. It's the same variable n we got a fraction here, a fraction here, and a fraction here. And we have a whole number here. And this one's an improper fraction, isn't it? But we still have three fractions. We have to get rid of them. So we find the least common multiple of all the denominators. We have a 10, a 2, a 5. And the best one to choose would be 10, because 10 times 1 is 10. 2 times 5 is 10. 5 times 2 is 10. Yep, 10 the best least common multiple to choose for all of them. So now we need to multiply both sides of the equal sign, both sides of the equation, by that 10, that least common multiple. We can do it as a whole number 10 or a 10 over 1. So we have to multiply the 7 tenths n by the 10, and we have to multiply the 3 halves by the 10. And then on this side of the equal sign, we have to multiply the 3 fifths n by the 10 and the 2 by the 10. See? Each term is going to get multiplied by 10. All right, so for this first one, I just put it over 1 to make it easier to see how I'm multiplying the fraction. And this 10 and this 10 can cancel each other out as a 1, can't they? There's 1 10 here and 1 10 here. So I, now I don't have to reduce so much because I'm doing it by canceling. 
1 times 7 is 7 over a 1. 7 over 1 is 7 as a whole number with an n uh, variable. See? So that's our first one. Then we have 10 over 1 times 3 halves. 5 times, this cancels out, okay? The 2 and the 10 cancel out as a 1 and a 5. There's 1, 2 here and 5, 2's here. So it's a 1 and a 5. 5 times 3 is 15 over 1. 15 over 1 is 15. Now we have to multiply the 3 fifths n by 10 over 1. So this 5 cancels out as a 1, and the 10 cancels out as a 2. See? There's 1 5 here and 2 5's here. 2 times 3 is 6 over 1 times 1 is 1. 6 over 1 is 6n. And then, yeah, we got to do this one times 10 also. 10 times 2 is 20. So now we have a plus 20 because there's a plus there. Now we can just use inverse operations to solve it. It doesn't matter if we start using inverse operations on the variable term or on the constant term. doesn't matter. This time I chose to start with the constant. I saw there's a plus 15, so I'm going to subtract 15 from both sides. Plus 15 minus 15 makes a zero pair, doesn't it? And it cancels that out. 20 take away 15 is 5. Now let's see if we can get rid of these uh, variables and isolate them to one side. So there's already a variable term on this side by itself. So I'm going to subtract 6n from both sides. Because that's a positive 6, I'm going to subtract 6. Positive take away negative 6 cancels itself out, and it's gone. And then 7n take away 6n leaves just an n. It's our invisible 1n friend, right? So now we have n equals 5. Well, that was a lot more work than doing just one variable, wasn't it? But if you chip away at, a, at it a little bit at a time, it's really not that big of a deal because we're just multiplying each term by the 10, see? By that least common multiple. Now, if you're really, really confused, you can go back to the grade 7 math videos, number 6.4a and 6.4b, and it'll talk about this one variable with the reciprocal. And if you're really confused about our invisible one friend, you can go back to 6.2b, and that will tell you about the invisible one, okay? That's grade 7 math also, but it's video number 6.2b, okay, for that invisible one, all right? That'll help you out if you don't know what I'm talking about. Because we're going to use that invisible one a lot as we're continuing on, all right? And we're going to keep talking about solving linear equations. And our next video is 7.2b. I hope this was really helpful. I hope you're doing okay. And I'll see you next video. Bye.